Hello, welcome to JSOM's Business Communication Center Resume Format Workshop video. In this video, you will learn about where to get free resume help from two JSOM resource centers. You will also learn about the role of artificial intelligence in the resume selection process. You will be able to, able to locate the perfect resume template for your major and apply the JSOM formatting requirements. This video will help you begin developing your brand, one that will carry through to your cover letter and LinkedIn page. You will understand the difference between bullet points that just tell about a task and those that show a skill, and you will also learn a formula to help you demonstrate those skills. Finally, we will add a note about metrics and AI. But before we get started, let's talk about the resource centers that can help you with your resume. All JSOM students qualify to visit two resource centers free of charge. First, there is the Business Communication Center, or BCC. Here, JSOM students can get one-on-one -on -one appointments with experienced consultants. This can help you apply the format requirements and also help you use a tried-and-true formula to write your bullet points. But that's not all the BCC does. In fact, it's an entire writing and presentation resource center exclusively devoted to helping students develop their written and verbal communication skills. After viewing this video, schedule an appointment at bcc.utdallas.edu so a tutor can help you with your resume. Once you have mastered the format and how to write a bullet point at the BCC, consultants at the second resource center, the Career Management Center, or CMC, are available to provide advice to adjust your bullet points for specific jobs. The CMC is a career consulting service. The BCC and CMC are free for JSOM students. Finally, the Career Center has free resume help. But remember the Career Center is for all UT Dallas students, not just JSOM. So the advice you may receive there may not focus on some of the aspects of resume writing for business applicants. So for now, it will be wise to limit your resource centers to just the BCC and the CMC. If a company has over 500 employees nationwide, they are almost certainly using some kind of artificial intelligence to help them process resumes. Why? Well, they just receive so many. You will hear this type of artificial intelligence referred to as AI, applicant tracking systems, or ATS, sometimes just scanners. For every 100 applications a company receives, only about 25% make it through to the ACS. Of those 25, only four to six candidates are invited to interview, and of those, maybe one to three make it to the second round. Of course, only one finally gets the job. So your first goal on your resume is just to get it through the ATS. Remember that 95% of Fortune 500 companies use ATS, and so do about 90% of all companies. Your second goal is to get your resume into Pile A. What does that mean? Well, here's how the resume selection typically works. My supervisor brings me a stack of resumes and says, here are the resumes that the ATS selected for spring accounting internship. I want to see the strongest 10 by noon tomorrow. And then he or she puts 375 resumes on my desk. Of course, 1,125 other resumes were rejected by the ATS, so I never even see them. Well, I can't possibly read each of the 375 resumes thoroughly enough to meet that deadline. So I'm probably going to pre-sort these resumes into three files piles rather, pile A, pile B, and pile C. In pile A, I will put the resumes that I know for sure I want to read. Pile B will be resumes I'll read if I don't get 10 strong resumes in pile A. Pile C is, of course, the trash. Now, I'm probably going to use one of two methods to pre-sort these resumes into the th three files. The first method is to look at the format. Does the resume look like I can scan it in the 10 seconds I'm going to spend on each resume? If there's too much white space, it may look like that candidate didn't do very much, and so that resume may go into pile B. On the other hand, if there's not enough white space, 
There's too much text, that is. Some of the sections may look like full paragraphs, and I certainly don't have enough time to scan through full paragraphs. So that resume may go in pile B or pile C. If it's two pages, it will definitely go into pile C, because I just don't have time for that. And hey, I don't want to know everything this resume has, this, I, rather this candidate has ever done. I just want to know the most significant thing they've done, specifically the things that are relevant for this job that I need to fill. If they can't focus on that and get the resume down to one page, they probably can't be sufficiently focused on the task I need them to do in the job either. The second method some employers may use to pre-sort is to match the first words in the bullet points with certain skills they need for this job. And they likely have some magic number in their head. Let's say it's six. They're looking for six skills that will match the specific skill set needed for the job. So they start circling or underlining or starring or checking the different bullet points that have those skills. Let's say the first bullet point begins with the verb analyzed. Oh yes, I need someone who has analytical skills for sure. So I'm circling that word. Remember, they're only doing the first word. They are not scanning the rest of the resume. The next bullet begins with the word provided. Hmm, not so sure that's a match, and I've got 375 resumes to select from, so I'm not circling that line. So if I circle six words total, this resume is going to pile B, because it did meet my minimum standard requirement, but if I circle seven in the next resume, that one is probably going in pile A, because it exceeded my minimum standard requirement. If I circle fewer skills than six, well, pile C it is. Your third goal is to stay in file pile A once your resume gets to the human reader. So if you want your resume to get through the ATS, then be pre-sorted into pile A and finally stay in pile A, well, the remainder of this video will help you learn how to achieve all those goals. So how do I meet the first goal, that of getting my resume through the ATS? Fortunately, the Career Management Center, the CMC, here at UT Dallas, has provided templates for you, and you can find those on their website. The URL for the CMC is on the slide. Once you load your resume into Handshake, which is the platform employers use to find UTD students they want to recruit for jobs, the CMC will check your resume. If your resume does not meet the CMC's minimum requirements, you will receive an email notifying you that you need to make some changes. Until the CMC accepts your resume, you won't be able to apply for jobs through Handshake and employers won't be able to see your resume. Once you download the CMC's resume template, you will find that the margins are 0.6 inches on the top, bottom, and sides. Margins smaller than 0.5 inches are in a scanner danger zone because scanners usually cannot process information outside that margin. One-inch margins are standard for all business documents, but in resumes, we tend to bend the rules a little because of the fast reading, fast reading nature of the document and because all the information has to fit on one page. So in this case, one-inch margins are simply too wide. The wide edges could make my resume look like I didn't have much to say about myself. So to hide that, I made the letters really large to take up lots of space. I don't want to give that impression. What font should I use? Well, the font should be Calibri style lettering. And also, you might ask, well, what font size should I use? Well, in this case, the template's font size is set at 11, 11, um, font point, 11 point font size. Not 11 o'clock, 11 point font size. All of this is already preset on the template. You don't need to change anything. The sections, like education, work experience, and so forth, are set up already in the template. You just use them or delete them to match your experience. Finally, you will note that the template is very simple and plain. This minimalist concept is critical to making it past the ATX selection. The template contains no lines or sh shading across the entire page. Why? Well, the reason is that most ATSs cannot process information if it has lines or shading. So if your resume contains those formatting features, the text will likely be illegible. In most cases, ATSs or scanners cannot process information in text boxes, text boxes, headers, footers, or resumes. And for the same reason, 
don't put your resume on, you don't put your picture on your resume. ATSs cannot read images, and your resume will end up in the trash. We've got a few further ATS tips for you as you work with the CMC resume template. First, ATS capabilities differ according to how much the system costs and how the algorithms are written and updated. Each one may function differently, and they're constantly, constantly changing. For example, in late 2020, we discovered that some ATS systems were moving in information in any sections that did not have the word experience in the section heading and sliding that information down to the bottom of the resume, the place normally reserved for less important details. So if just the word education, rather than the more complete education experience, was the title of the section, the degree information ended up at the, at the end of the resume as some sort of extra or additional detail. But you, as a UT Dallas student, you want to highlight your hard-earned degree. So add the word experience to the education section title. Further, be sure to reformat your Word document to a PDF document, .pdf. But when you do that, make sure it's a text PDF and not an image PDF because ATSs cannot read images. Finally, use terms that would be considered keywords or buzzwords in the context of your chosen field. You may want to look at the job posting to get ideas and you use a few of the keywords there. However, when you do that, be careful not to simply cut and paste long stretches of the job description text in your bullet points. Why? Well, some employers will set ATS to eliminate exact wording copied from the job description. Let's go from the abstract to the specific, to the concrete. Let's look at two examples of resumes. From what we just reviewed about scanners or ATSs, it's clear that the resume on the left is ATS compliant. In fact, it is one of the examples on the CMC's website. The resume on the right, on the other hand, is from a random resume builder website called Novo Resume. This resume will not be selected during the scanning process for several reasons. Not only does it look as, as if it were set up in two columns, which is not ATS compliant, it's also got a picture. Both of these features will likely prevent the resume from being selected by the scanner. The right-hand one also has boxes and lines, which are some very extensive formatting features. These are not easily captured by ATS. While the resume on the right is quite beautiful, it is not ATS compliant. It could, however, be taken to an interview. But it is not appropriate for submitting electronically or even a career fair, since even a hard copy submitted at a career fair might end up being fed through a scanner. The top of the template contains your name, contact information, and LinkedIn URL. This is your brand, and you want it to look the same on all your application documents so as to give the appearance of being organized. You're the one who is organized in this case, but they can only see that through your documents. If you have a cover letter, you will use this same brand at the top of the page. Your name should be a, a few font size points larger than anything else on your resume. On the template, the font for the name is sized at 16 points but all the rest of the text should be 11 point font size. Of course, your phone, email, and LinkedIn URL should be part of your brand. And if you have a pre professional website, you may include that too. Finally, include your city, state, and zip code. Some employers may sort resumes by zip code, only selecting resumes from three or four zip codes and rejecting all the rest, including those with no zip code at all. What are some things I shouldn't do? Well, some don'ts to avoid on your resume include your street address, which is a holdover from days when we apply to jobs through the US Postal Service. Also, don't list the classes you took. Most employers are very well aware of the classes require, required to obtain a degree in your field. And employers tend to become frustrated when we tell them things on the resume they already know about us. If you took a class that is not required and you think it will be significant for the job you're applying for, list that under the academic project section and develop that class in explanatory bullet points. 
as you do this, build this explanatory, build these bullet points around a project you completed in that class. That way it's not just, here's a class I took, but here's something I did in that class. Some actual proof I know what I'm doing. Another thing you want to avoid putting is any information about hobbies. Hobbies are generally inappropriate for a resume. No one really cares if I design and make felt hats in my spare time. Another thing you want to avoid putting down is references. References are inappropriate on a resume. The, res the employer knows you will supply as references if requested, and anyway, that part is usually taken care of somewhere in the application process. So, now that you know all this information, your task now is to revise your resume using the CMC template, and then visit the BCC for a one-on-one -on -one individual meeting. The BCC consultant will double-check your resume format and help refine your, refine your bullet points. You can schedule appointments for your cover letter and LinkedIn profile too, but BCC services are not limited to job search documents. By the way, Beyond resumes and cover letters, you can also make appointments for any and all of your class written doc assignments, presentations, and slides. So, come on down, visit the BCC, and make your resume stand out among the entire competition.